And um, this is one of my uh, good buddies in, in the community because he's also a VI user. So, you know, VI users are really nice guys. Uh, so, um, Richard, as I told you, uh, if you were not here, he actually proposed to have the name Beacon for this conference when we were discussing about making it or not. And he's been in, in the order of the bee since the very beginning. So, please welcome Richard Esplin. Is it working now? Yeah. Yes? OK. Samuel said, wow, Richard, you don't even look nervous. Five. And then I came in here, and things suddenly went very pear-shaped. So I apologize for that. It's what I get for being tranquil and calm. Um, so I, as Boris said, I'm Richard Esplin, product manager at Alfresco. Uh, I'm responsible for large portions of the ECM platform, as well as uh, our open source strategy regarding community edition. So, Yesterday, we talked, uh, Thomas and, and Mark talked about how we make decisions as a company. And uh, we're being much more formal, much more careful, and everything comes down to a business case. So when I be joined the product management team about a year and a half ago, my first task was to build our business case and make sure we had a formal set of approvals around community edition and what, what investments we make in our open source product. So my goal today is to take you into our boardroom, uh, conference room, our chairs are different, but the rest looks about the same. And, uh, and give you insight into how we put this into the, to what we concluded in this process. The full presentation is usually like an hour and a half when I'm giving it to members of the team. Shows a lot of data about how people use community edition, at least the pieces we have, and shows a lot of gaps in our data. Um, but in this 20 minute conversation, I'm just talking about the conclusions we made because I fear that's what's most useful for you. And we can continue the conversation if you're interested later around, uh, you know, at lunch or later today or online later uh, some other day. The, the interesting, the, the goal in this exercise is, is an open source community. It's, it's like John Soderopoulos says, you know, we, we need to be, we need to speak with integrity. We want to make sure that you're participating with Community Edition with a clear understanding of, of why we're using Community Edition so that people have, uh, good expectations and don't get frustrated when, when there's mismatches. There, there's always mismatches. Different people engage with different motivations, but we want to minimize it by being upfront. So that's the goal. So the first step was to say, why do we have an open source product? And we went around the team and looked at the history of how Community Edition gets used and, and looked at the history of how we've, we have used Community Edition, talked to John Newton about why he made things open source at the beginning, and John Powell, and, so look, there's four objectives, four reasons why when we say we're going to make this open source, it falls into one of these four buckets. So first of all is to be the default ECM solution. We want Alfresco to be the level set for the, or for the entire industry on what good ECM is. Instead of rolling your own in some half-baked way or trying to put all your word files in subversion or uh, using SharePoint because it got handed to you. We want people to just say, look, there's this open source thing out there and it's free and we should use that. And by bringing people into this idea of what is content management, what is enterprise content management, and uh, what is the sort of faith, by setting expectations about what are the capabilities that are expected there, uh, we want to make it easier for people to, to see, to grow up in this industry and see the benefits that our further products provide. Second, is by having this standard content management uh, free product that everybody can use, you can build stuff and you can share it with others. And that benefits our paying customers, that benefits the ecosystem as a whole. And so that's a good thing. And having that open source license gives you certain guarantees that make it easier for you to contribute and make it more fun. Third is that we want to look at those contributions and pick the best ones and bring them into the product. Now, as we talked about yesterday, we're still working on how to get better at that. But the product has benefited a lot from the work you've done. And we want to continue that. Uh, it, it's very much currently driven from a product management. We look at ideas that are out there and try and take the best in. Uh, it would be nice for us to, to distribute that process. But that's one of the main, main goals we have and one of the main expectations our customers have. And fourth is that Community Edition is an on-ramp to paid offerings. Uh, when we survey our customers, we find that roughly half of them 
see open source as a key differentiator for Alfresco and is a key part of who we are in the market and a key reason why they picked Alfresco. Uh, we, we occasionally get feedback like, you said you were open source, but you're not leveraging the innovation model the way it could be. And I can take that back to the team and say, look, you know, this customer has this criticism and we need to address it, which leads to some of these conversations. Um, and we also know that uh, customers frequently start with community edition, and when they do, our sales team can get involved later in the process, and it costs us less to acquire that customer. Because they might have a very long incubation period, but the period of time our sales team is engaged is much shorter. And so that lowers our cost of acquisition. So those are the four, four key objectives. Now, my boss likes to say, um, I report to Eric, he likes to say, look, values are how you make a decision in the absence of data. So when we need to make a fast decision, when we haven't collected the data yet, when we're deciding where to invest in collecting data, these are the four values that we have decided govern our decision making process. We want open innovation, we want to accept tools and uh, APIs and protocols that make it easy for people to interact with us and we want to communicate openly that way. We want to be transparent in how we talk or as John Sott says, you know, speaking with integrity. We do have to recognize that there's certain, you know, customer data we can't share. Um, there's certain things we need to be careful about, but, uh, but we want transparency to be our default as much as possible. Uh, we want to drive adoption of our community edition product. That's when we make a decision, frequently say, is this going to drive more adoption? Because if it does, then we have a bias towards that. But we need to balance that with the challenge of conversion. If, if everything is free, then we get lots of adoption and we'll get no conversion. If everything is paid, then we'll get, some convert, we'll get lots of conversion, but very little adoption. And we are always in this process of saying, how is the trade-off going to happen? So, and that, that leads to some of that, that work we did. I looked at, uh, I looked at deals that, uh, all the deals we engaged with over a period of time, and said, how many of these deals interacted with community edition at some point? The, the, the sales rep mentioned it in their notes. And of those, how many of them uh, chose enterprise edition and how many of them chose community edition? Because these are people who knew about both. And we found that we were pretty happy with that rate. Um, the ones that didn't choose enterprise edition predominantly were not deals we were interested in being engaged in. And so we went back to the team and said, hey, so if our conversion's working okay, then that means we need to focus more on adoption. We need to help more people use community edition so we have a bigger pool of people that are, know about our products. And so that's, that gives you an idea of how we make some of these decisions as we, as we weigh these two, these two values. So I, I mentioned there's some use cases we don't want to be in. And we looked and said, of these deals that didn't select enterprise edition, how many of them did we actually want? And Small deals is not where, we're, where we focus. Our pricing is not optimized for small deals. Our sales team is not optimized for small deals. Our partners predominantly focus on large deals. That, so small deployments is, uh, is an area where we're very comfortable. That community edition is probably right for them. We also looked and said, uh, frequently people are using community edition to evaluate new features or explore new projects. That's a great place to use community edition. Uh, and frequently they'll end up using Enterprise Edition at some point in that engagement, but that's a great place to use Community Edition. And we do recognize that some organizations have an open source commitment that they want to keep everything in house. They do not want, uh, they don't want to outsource any of that expertise. And we recognize if that's the case, you know, Boris tells me about a hospital in this area that it's everything must be open source and they don't hire consultants and they want their internal staff to be completely competent in all these things and that's great. You know, community edition is designed for those use cases too, but there is a cost. They've got to be committed to that self-support. They've got to be committed to dealing with upgrades. They've got to be committed to finding the right partners to work with if, if they decide to find a, an external consultant. And hopefully they're going to spend the time collaborating and contributing back to the community so the roadmap meets their needs. And, and we want people to recognize those costs. So that leads us to say we need a product vision. And the goal of this is not to say this is a go-to-market thing. This is a product management tool to say when I have a decision to make, does it meet the vision that we have for this product or does it not? So we want to grow, you know, this product should be growing off Fresco market share, it should be driving innovation, it should have a vibrant open source community, and it does that by being complete, customizable, and widely adopted ECM system. But we are focusing the product on those small businesses and departmental markets. 
the thinking is that if it's a if, it, if the product is easy to use and is robust and stable for that smaller use case, then it meets all three of these use cases fairly well. Uh, people can evaluate new features on that product, and people who are committed on keeping it in-house can understand these are the limitations Alfresco's uh, keeping in mind as they build the product, but they can, they can work on it with those clear expectations, and there's still room for, for us to have other offerings. Some clarifications. So when we say small, that's a fuzzy word. So we find it's really helpful for us to put a number to that. You'll notice the little uh, tilde, we're talking approximately 100 users. It was open source. Uh, I was talking to somebody, like, sales team said, wait, you're going to put a limit in how many users can be on Community Edition? It's like, no, it's open source. You'll just, you'll just take it out and get it from somewhere else. Like, that, that would not be in our best interest. But when we're looking at saying, is this predominantly for, for large users, or is it for large use cases? Is this a feature that it's going to be useful for 90 users? Um, a good example is the records management work we've done for the Navy. Uh, they have a need to delegate records, record management administrators, because they have thousands and thousands of records managers. And they, each one has a security clearance. They can only see certain parts of their file plan. That's not terribly useful for 100 users. So we said that makes sense for it to be enterprise only. Uh, the second criteria we say is a single server. Uh, anything clustering, uh, the transformation server, desktop sync has a high performance external server. Things that architecturally to make them work require more than one server. We've said, hey, that's not community edition. That's not targeted at the smaller use cases. Um, Alfresco only supports enterprise edition. So we say community editions for non-mission critical use cases. We understand some people will use it in mission critical use cases or hire people to help them. But when an organization gets to the point where they want to call somebody on Sunday afternoon on a holiday, you know, Easter Sunday, and have that person answer, that's, that's the sort of time that we think, yeah, you probably need our enterprise support. And we're, but we do want to make sure community edition targets horizontal use cases. So when we say, you know, document collaboration, that's very horizontal. We want that in community edition. Uh, we, we've had this conversation around our simple file sharing interface. Uh, you'll notice uh, in Thomas's slides yesterday, it was not marked open source because we do not have official approval to open source that. But the business case I'm building says that's a horizontal use case. Having a simple interface to upload and download documents and, and not have all of the features of shared, that's, that is very useful for less than 100 users. It is single server and is very horizontal. That should be in community edition. That's how these business cases get built. And we do want to be clear about things that we reserve for enterprise. So anything that's a connection to a proprietary product, uh, anything that's a third-party plugin, those sort of things where we have to pay additional for or where you're paying somebody else for, we say, hey, you know, we're part of that monetary transaction. That's enterprise. Uh, scalability, high availability, clusterings, things like that, and related configuration, we keep that enterprise. We recognize that that's kind of a fuzzy definition. Um, and when we get into details, it gets really messy like to clean that up at some point. But that's the definition we got through the full formal approval today uh, at this point. SaaS products where we're doing hosting, where we're pro providing additional resources to, to host that product, uh, that's also enterprise. And uh, applications that, that don't have a horizontal appeal, uh, certain parts of our video editing and media manager, uh, publishing to a CDN, things like that, we've said these are enterprise because they're not widely adopted. Now, uh, contract management uh, is one that we said this fits in this use case, and then we decided that you know that's better pro provided by partners. Uh, but it, it, it's a good example of the sort of places where we said, yeah, that's probably something we'd reserve for for our enterprise customers. So what's the point of this process? The point is to say we're going to build the ideal product to meet the use case we've defined. We're going to take that product and we're going to drive wide adoption. We want as many people to use it as possible. Then we look and we say, hey, from that market, we want to identify the people that fit the enterprise use case more than they fit the community edition use cases. And those are our potential upgraders. And then we want to figure out how to talk to those people. So we try to be very careful to not go spamming every community edition user and, and things like that. Um, but we, instead, we want to say, you know, who are the people that actually do fit an enterprise use case, and how do we reach them appropriately? You'll find in the, uh, in the roadmap Thomas mentioned, one of the things he mentioned was a better instrumentation and, and better understanding of your repository. One of the goal, those goals of that is an opt-in, hey, what's going on with um, 
you know, please improve our first continuity addition by reporting back usage. You know, those sort of, that sort of data helps me provide a business case to my, to, to the investors, to, to the team that's making the, the budget decisions for why it gets used and how it's benefiting the company. So uh, that's gonna help us identify these potential upgraders. And then the last step is recognizing that not everybody's gonna be a potential upgrader. In fact, the minority of people will be a potential upgrader. And we wanna organically grow them. We wanna provide them the tools and capabilities they need to grow Alfresco in their business and grow their business to the point where they can be an enterprise customer. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the, uh, that's the strategy that we go to the team and say, look, this is how the money we spend on our R&D that goes to community edition uh, turns into something that we can take back to the investors. So there's, I, I wrote this up as a very long and detailed blog post where we go through each of the features in Alfresco 5.1 uh, and, and each of the important uh, decisions we made in Alfresco 1 and said, why is this open source and why is this enterprise? And try to give the reasoning behind each one of those. I also wrote a detailed blog post on, on various open source business models and where Alfresco fits in um, with, uh, it might be worth reading, saying you know, it, it, what sort of license is appropriate, what sort of community strategy is appropriate. That's background for this conversation, and it might help answer specific questions. And of course, you can reach me personally. There's my email address, richard.espinalfresco.com. Um, you know, and of course, I'm online all sorts of places. Chat.alfresco.com, I'm there most of the time during US business hours, and often outside of US business hours. So good ways to, to reach me. I did want to try and reserve five minutes for, I think we have time for two questions. Um, I'm worried that the questions might get too long, so don't be offended if we have to defer it to, to leave time for Jeff, Jeff's talk, so. Yeah, yeah, because. Do anybody have a question? I don't see any questions. That went smooth. I thought this was going to be a, a, I thought you were all going to bring tomatoes to throw at me. Yeah, we have a question. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what about Alfresco partners and community edition? Um, I know that there is some kind of conflict there. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, can you elaborate on the yeah. conflict? Uh, Alfresco the partners are uh, not uh, able to support or to help another business use community, for example. Uh, wouldn't it be better if they could and then help them grow to enterprise edition? to lower the uh, adoption, uh, to, to lower the cost to adoption? Yeah, and so the, the converse of the flip side of that conflict is that community edition integrators uh, often have somebody that wants to convert to enterprise. When they come to Alfresco, Alfresco wants to give preferential treatment to the certified partners. And so that undermines that business some. And we've struggled with how do we resolve both sides of that coin. Um, I put together a few proposals about how we can structure that. Uh, one of the nice things about saying community edition is 100 users or less is that even though there's no technical limitation of the product, we could build that into a partner contract if it was auditable. Um, unfortunately, it's not auditable today. Uh, so that, that drives a, a, a licensing change to Alfresco Enterprise Edition to have a report back how many users there are. And if we have some sort of analytics that says, here's an idea of what an average community edition repository is, then that helps us make some of those decisions too. So the short answer is we recognize the challenge. We don't have a, an approved answer yet, but we have looked at various ways that we can solve it both from a technical perspective and from a partner relationship perspective. So a related question to that one is um, Douglas, uh, our friend from Brazil. He said that he, he's not a partner from Alfresco, so he has customers who use community but if he would motivate them to go into enterprise, he will lose the customers because yeah. they will have to go with a partner. So there's no motivation for him to make them go to enterprise, although it will be a good idea for some of the customers. Yeah, and that, and that is that flip side to, to the challenge with, with partners working at Community Edition. I should emphasize that some certified partners think they can never install Community Edition. That's not the case. Um, you can't get paid to work on Community Edition and get paid to support on Community Edition, but a pro bono work or loss leader work, there are a lot of cases where it can make sense. Um, with the, we, we have been looking at improving our partner program and, and I, 
uh, most of our partners have received the communication about that so far. Um, one of those improvements might be a way for any influencer in a deal to be able to come in and say, yes, I was part of this deal, and I don't want to be cut out of it if it becomes enterprise. And we're looking at ways to, we're exploring ways to do that effectively. Um, but that's all an experiment. It's not an approved thing yet. Hi, Richard. It's not really a question, but a, a continuation of this thread. Um, that is, there would also be maybe a positive way to turn customers into enterprise customers, i.e. have like great support, SLA, guarantees, which you don't have even if you have a good partner working on community edition. If the value of that becomes very apparent to the customer and related to the price he's paying, why not? Why would every, anybody consider staying on community unless for an experiment? What's Alfresco's view on that? So to restate, your, your point is that is Alfresco's support and the support that comes from certified partners improves, then it becomes more appealing for people to move to a supported product? And that's definitely the case. I, we recognize that there are a lot of community edition integrators who do a great job. And, and they play a very valuable role for both enterprise customers and, uh, and non-enterprise customers. The, the, but, but we want our, our, the people who come to us and said, hey, look, we've taken the certification exams. We have a business model that's aligned with yours. You know, we want to make sure that they, that, that they receive value for investing in our business. And finding the right way to, to draw those lines and the right way to communicate and market about it is a constant challenge. Uh, it's something we've been working on improving. So I think I'm out of time. Is that correct? I have another question anyway. So in terms of features, when you have a future feature that comes in a version of a community, let's say 5.1, and it's a great feature, and everybody's using it, is there a guarantee that this feature is never going to be taken away from community and become enterprise only for the future releases? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, the John Newton did a blog post in August of, what year was that, 2014? Uh, to say, look, here's, Alfresco's restating our commitment to open source. And in that blog post, he talks about, you know, what sort of things would make enterprise that became the basis of this, and what the sort of things would, would probably remain in Community Edition. In general, something that's in Community Edition, we'd be very reluctant to remove. There's no legal requirement around that, but we are very reluctant. There are cases like clustering where we, didn't ever intend to be in community edition, but it kind of ended up in community edition due to a technical limitation that's left when we re-implemented that. Uh, there's things like the VT, the SharePoint support, where we had a fully open source implementation that's still available, um, but we, we purchased a, a proprietary technology to do that, and we're not able to, to open that proprietary te technology. So VTI left community edition, and the new thing is in community edition, but it's as a proprietary module. So it happens. The challenge is how do we do it in a way that's clear and transparent so that people don't constantly think my business is going to be destroyed. Um, and that's why we try to make this, this definition very clear so that people can say, here's the plan. Here's why Alfresco makes the decisions they do. They're talking to us transparently. They're giving us lots of notice. And you know, we do recognize when somebody contributes something to Alfresco, we want to make sure they're part of the plan for that long term. Uh, one of the questions we got yesterday was, would we make something proprietary that got contributed from people? And the answer is, we talk to the contributor before we make those decisions. Okay, so uh, let's thanks again, uh, Richard Esplin, for his presentation. And if you have, <laughs> if you have more questions, he's available the rest of the day. And uh, of course, at the end of the day, we have a, another session for questions and answers, which are open for everybody.